Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for clicking that subscribe button, the notification bell, and knowing each and every single time I upload a video. Thank you so much for being here. This is the year for breakthrough. This is the year where we educate each other. This is the year where we advise each other, where we bring forth our greatness and we step into it and we step into the light. This introduces my new segment on my channel, which is going to be called hashtag advice with cat. Now, the reason why I came up with the segment is because a lot of the time I'm always called the big sister cat. You are the big sister that I never had cat. You are the big sister. This, this cat, the big sister, cat, the big sister. And then I thought to myself, you know what? Fine fine okay i'm gonna take that role and because i want to fulfill that role i thought i'm gonna help in the smallest way possible and we're gonna start by talking about advice please put in your questions please tell me what you would like me to advise on bear in mind i'm not a professional of some of the things that i'm going to be talking about in the series but i'm going to advise you just as a woman an older sister a fellow you know, person on the YouTube space, anybody, anybody, whoever I am to you, I'm going to advise you as that person. So thank you so much to everybody who put in their questions on the YouTube community tab, on Instagram. I got so many questions and this is going to be a rolling series. So there's going to be many videos of this nature. So even if I don't get to your question today, because a lot of these questions uh, demand thorough responses as much as I can. So even if I don't get to your question today, just know that I will get to the question because I know where they are. I've saved them, I've put them away, so we're gonna do it that way, all right? So before we get into the video where I answer your questions or I give my advice to you guys, please click the notification bell, subscribe to the channel. We are on the road to 2020, <laughs> sister. <laughs> Sister, we are on the road to 30K subscribers. Let us get there as quick as we can. Repost, retweet, share the video. I really love it when I see you guys watching the video, whether on Instagram or on Twitter, anywhere. Repost, retweet, share. We love it. We're going to get into the questions. Oh, let me do my teeth first. Hang on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, the first question says, is it worth it to suppress who you truly are at your core for a relationship to work? And I felt a tinge of hurt, sadness when I read this um, question because I, I feel like you should never, ever, ever have to compromise on who you are, your authenticity, where you come from, your background, where you're at in life. You should never have to compromise anything about yourself in order to get a relationship to work. Whoever that person is should be able to love, treat, feel, respect, be loyal to whatever it is to you to make the relationship work. You should never have to compromise who you are, change your look, change your brand, change how you feel, what, what dress, all of that. You should never have to compromise who you are to get someone to stay. Because in that notion, you're not truly being authentic to who you are. So getting a relationship to work should always be because you both want it to work and you're working on parts of yourselves that are not entirely uh, helpful towards the relationship, but because you want to do it right and because you want to be right for yourself and for that partner. Do you understand what I'm saying? For yourself and for that partner, then you're willing to put in the work. But you should never have to compromise who you are for the sake of making any relationship work. Whether it's with a parent, a sibling, a friend, a relationship, never ever have to compromise who you are because at that point, you're already demeaning parts of yourself that you love, truly, just for the sake to get someone to stay or to be in your life. And that, that ain't it, sis. Catch me outside. How about that? Uh, I would like to chat about dealing with change. Change in the sense of if you as an individual changing your belief systems and your overall outlook on life. 
change, dealing with the change that people in your life also experience. Also the process of unlearning a lot of things that we held on to when we were young. And finally, this is a this is a long one. And finally, just being okay with living in the gray. Some things are not always black and white. Right, let's dissect it. Change in the sense of you as an individual changing your life, belief systems, and your overall outlook on life. One thing that we all need to understand is that change is an ever constant. Change is gonna happen right throughout your life. Everything about you is gonna change. Your thoughts are gonna change. Your belief systems are gonna change. You might grow up being a Christian and live out the rest of your life being a Muslim. Anything can happen, anything can change. It's an ever constant. And I feel like opening yourself up to broadening your mind and broadening your horizons to realizing that life isn't as black and white and life is actually gray, puts you in a position, a better space to be able to deal with what comes with change. Because if you narrow your mind and you narrow your belief systems to this is what I know, this is who I am, this is what I, how I want to live my life. I do not want to see this, that. I'm not looking in my periphery. I'm looking that way. That is going to set you up for a little bit of failure, especially when it comes to when you grow up and you get exposed to different parts of the world, the parts of people, parts of culture, belief systems, and all of that. So you need to also put yourself in the space where you allow change to happen to you and you allow yourself to see it in a way in which it's not limiting you of who you are or it's not trying to change you in any way from what you already know, but open, you, open up your mind in the sense that, okay, oh, so this can be like this. Oh, okay, I didn't think about that. Oh, okay. So relationships can be like this or people can be like this and people are not as perfect and clear cut as, you know, we think or whatever. That opens your mind up to actually dealing with whatever the consequences come from the change that is currently happening in your life at the time. Um, also the process of unlearning a lot of things that we held on to when we were young. You know, and a, a basic example is, this is funny because I haven't looked at these questions until today. So I'm trying to uh, go off of what I am saying, feeling in the moment. The process of unlearning things that we held on to when we were young, I immediately thought of things like marriage. For me, when I was young, marriage was a thing, you know, so my parents, when I was really young, right, until my parents divorced. But marriage was a thing, happily ever after was a thing, I'm going to get married first, then have a child, then, then this, then, then that. And then I grew up and started seeing different parts of life and of people when it comes to the concept of marriage. My parents divorced. Then you start seeing that even people in married relationships are having extramarital affairs, like it's nothing. Then you look at concepts like monogamy, and is it a thing, is it not a thing? All of those kinds of things open my mind up to seeing that, you know what, certain things that I have learned growing up, feeling like this is it, this is where I should be at, this is where I should be about, or all of that, might not necessarily be the end all and be all. Life is very gray. And you find out the older you get that, okay, yeah, that ain't it. <laughs> I'm not going to do this or I'm not going to do this or I never thought to see something like this that way. So if you open yourself up to it, you open yourself up to unlearning all those little things that have become etched in your mind growing up and opening yourself up to see other sides of the spectrum. So never look at life through a narrow lens. Always look at your periphery. You know what I'm saying? Never look at life through blinders. You know when horses are racing, they've got blinders on, look at the front, go. You can't necessarily do that as a human living in life and all of that. You have to experience every other side. In that way, you get to one, be more um, broadened in your horizons, but also at the same time, be more softer when it comes to yourself, what you have learned and what you're trying to unlearn. So it's going to take years. It's a unlearning something 
is as long as learning something. It takes as long a period as learning something. So all you need to do is work on figuring out a way that, okay, this is not really what I thought it was. So look into why you feel that way and which way will work best for you going forward at the space in life that you're in at the moment. I hope that answers your question. Yes. Advice for someone trying to leave a relationship that clearly isn't working. How to focus on myself, what sort of routines and activities to keep me from going back to the toxic relationship when I'm feeling bored or lonely. Here's the thing about toxic relationships. They are called toxic for a reason. There's something about them that continuously pulls you into that person. It can be the sex, it can be what he or she or they did for you, it can be anything, anything. It can really, really be anything. So getting out of that toxic space is really difficult to do. But the first thing is accept and acknowledge that that is a toxic relationship, which from what I'm reading, you've already accepted and acknowledged that that's what it is. Second thing is trying to find yourself and who you were prior to that relationship. So one big thing that happens when we're in toxic relationships is we lose ourselves quite a bit. When you're in a good, healthy, prosperous, give and take, compromise, sacrifice to certain degrees kind of relationship, you find yourself quite a bit. You find good things about yourself. You find what you will and you won't tolerate and you exercise it. You find what you will and you won't speak about and you exercise it. After I left a toxic relationship, there were many things, having sat down and thought about it, there were many things that I felt that, wow, I could have actually I sacrificed a lot when it came to this. I pretended that I was cool with not celebrating Valentine's Day because my partner didn't celebrate Valentine's Day. And then I realized that, nah fam, uh-uh. I'm not cool with that kind of stuff. I want to celebrate Valentine's Day. If I'm going to romanticize my life, why would I have an issue with somebody romanticizing me, even if it's for one day? And what I did in my current relationship is I made that clear from the onset. I celebrate Valentine's Day. I celebrate anniversaries. I live my life like this, and I would like us to both incorporate how we live our lives so that we become better versions of ourselves for each other. Do you understand what I'm saying? So to leave, to be able to, um, um, blah, 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 blah. to be able to leave a relationship that isn't working, you have to acknowledge that it's toxic in the first place and then work on yourself, finding who you are. You have to, there's certain places where you have to draw the line. You have to say, uh-uh, I'm not gonna entertain this. I'm done with this. Nah, fam, nope. You have to find the strength in you where you choose yourself first. If you cannot choose yourself, you're allowing somebody to have a hold and a power over you. And why would you want to have somebody who is toxic have a hold and a power over your life? Think about it that way. So choose the things that make you you and work on yourself. If you like reading, if you like traveling, if you like this, if you like this, and you want to still keep doing those things and you can be in a space where you can and you know that these things will encourage, help, develop, build, strengthen your mental health, then work on those things. Because once you realize how much of yourself you are feeding by yourself, not by that person, it's gonna be easier to walk away from a toxic relationship. Once you realize that you deserve better and you can give yourself that better even in a space where you're alone for a period of time, an hour or two, you are gonna leave that space. Uh All right. Hi, Kat. Can you please talk about how you manage your mental health in the workplace when triggered and how you talk yourself out of feeling inferior in a work position you know you worked hard for? This is a good question. Let's start. There's two parts to the question. Please talk about how you manage your mental health in the workplace when triggered. Now, I've got bad mental health days, and I know that many of us have bad mental health days, but you know what? Even though you have a bad mental health day, you still got to live your life. You still got to go to work. So what I would advise is what I have exercised 
in my space in terms of bad mental health days and I have to go to work. I will go to work, but I feel like one thing you can control is how much you interact with other people on that particular day, how much you interact with other people. If you don't need to interact with them, don't. Focus on yourself that day, focus on what your deliverables are, do that, do your work because you can't not be at work, right? You can't just, but if you can afford to take a day off or two days off, you've got leave days forever, for forever, take your leave days. Because the thing about us is that we wanna, we wanna constantly be working so we can make money and whatever, and we forget that our mind needs a break. Our mental health needs to be looked after as well. So if you've got mental health, mental health, if you've got, well, we should have mental health leave days, but if you've got, leave days take that time that time is allocated to you that's why there's things like forced leave where they force you to go home and sit at home okay so if you can't do that if you don't have mental health if you don't have leave days just keep to yourself at work if you can keep to yourself Take it slow with yourself. If you don't have anything that you have to deliver immediately on that day, take it slow with yourself. Work at a little bit of a slower pace. Take breaks. Walk outside. Smell the air. Let the sun hit your face. Sit outside for lunch instead of eating lunch in your office. Dissociate yourself from that space for a little bit. Here and there. Here and there right and also if you need a moment go to the bathroom if you need to go to the bathroom five times that day ten times that day just so that you can look at yourself in the mirror and say only a few more hours to go only a few more i got it i got it i got this i got this so you can psych yourself up because unfortunately not all of us have the opportunity to take the day off right so be more aware of the space that you are in hydrate Eat good on that day. Very, very important. Because when you eat crappy foods, if you have a pie, if you have a whatever, you're going to feel lethargic after you eat that. You're not going to feel good. And it's most likely not going to improve your mood at all. But if you eat something fresh, something this, and you hydrate, and you keep moving, and you keep working, no matter how slow or fast the pace is, focus on yourself for that day. Still deliver your deliverables, but focus on yourself and work on yourself on that particular day. And it should make things a little bit easier. If you can leave work early that day, do that too. Do that too. How do you talk yourself out of feeling inferior in a position you know you worked hard for? I don't know how you mean feeling inferior as opposed to others or you are in that position, but you feel inferior still to yourself. I don't want to answer that one only particularly because I don't know what context it's coming from. So if you really want me to answer it, put it down in the comments below and then I'll address it that way. I would love some advice on how to live with anxiety, especially social anxiety and how it can affect your productivity and literally your entire life and how to deal with it. In truth, I love advice with Kat because we can talk about these things. But anxiety and mental health is something I talk about a lot on my channel, in my vlogs. If it's written there, a mental health day, I would highly suggest you watch that vlog or that video or that what. Because that is when I give the advice of what you can do when it comes to anxiety, managing it, mitigating it as much as you can. Because anxiety is not something you switch on and off. It, it just hits right but there are steps there are things that you can do to manage it as much as you can to the best of your abilities to make things a little bit easier for you so without taking too much time answering this question i really do implore you implore you to watch my videos on mental health days mental health updates all of that because i speak about this thoroughly i speak about eating right i speak about sleeping I speak about if you do not feel the need to be out and your social anxiety is at a high, 
give yourself that 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 moment don't go right but you need to be able to watch my content so you can see exactly what it is that i speak about especially on high anxiety days i was speaking to a friend of mine and i was telling her that i feel like i'm a high functioning anxious person because even though I'm really anxious, I still bring myself forward to work and push content and this, 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 even on a bad mental health day. But I feel better at the end of it because I do like to be productive. But all I'm saying is that give yourself space to listen to yourself and listen to your body, listen to your mind, but also activate all the things that you could do, like eating right and sleeping enough and switching off social media detoxes, all of those things because social media and social anxiety are highly linked because these are social spaces with different people, right? So watch my videos, please, please, please watch my videos and recommend them when you see them so that other people can see them too, okay? I hope that answers your question as well. Hi Kat, firstly, I just wanna say I've always seen you as my big sister. I know you probably have spoken about this before, but my question is, how do you deal with grieving after the pass of your mother? I lost my sister when I was eight and my dad when I was in grade 10. And to this day, I'm struggling to accept the passing of them both. And I've decided that this year, I want to try and do the work so that I can live with this. Okay, this is difficult because grief, no one can determine how long you go through a stage or process of grief. Some people can move past it and start living a normal life from two years in, some people from five, some people from 10. But all I can say is lean into the people who fill your life with joy. Lean into the people who support, who encourage you. Also, take therapy, counseling. That these things are things that are so taboo, especially amongst black people, that we don't talk about them enough. But therapy helps. Finding a therapist, a counselor, anybody who can speak to you and advise you and equip you with the correct tools of how to deal with the different stages of grief. Because initially it's really, really painful, then it gets lighter, then it gets lighter. But you, it doesn't mean you still don't struggle with it, but it gets better. But only someone who is qualified to produce you or help teach you and equip you with the correct tools is a therapist or a counselor. And they can speak to you and tell you that, listen, it's okay to feel how you feel, right? But I would say as somebody who's not educated enough in this field, I would say leaning into people who matter to you the most, leaning into things that make you happy. Also, write about your father and your, is it your father and your brother? Write about uh, your sister and write about your father as well. Write about the things that you miss about them, the things that they were amazing at or with, or what you loved about them the most. Write it down, pick up a journal, write it down. And on those days where you are really having a really tough time and you're struggling really, 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 a lot, a lot, a lot, oh, what a lot I got, pick up that journal and read it because that is going to help you. It's gonna help you feel a little bit better. It's gonna fill you with them. Go through a memory box, look at their pictures, all of that. I know as much as it may hurt to see their pictures, but it's also a way in which you're celebrating the life that they lived. And it, you are the, a product of them. You are a part of them. So if you think about it in the sense that they would want you to be happy, they would want you to live a full, normal, you know, just a full, happy, content life. When you think about it that way, you're going to work hard, hard so that you are able to fulfill this wish of theirs because there is no parent or sibling that doesn't want good things for their loved ones. None. None. Unless Vasile and Jay. Yeah, understand it. But none. A lot of the time, I want the best things for my sister. I want the best things for my sisters, brothers, my family, my father, everybody, my friends. So people who genuinely matter to you want the best for you and they would have wanted you to be happy. So choose happiness, even through your grief. Choose to make them happy. Let that be your ode from you to them to say that I'm going to live a full and full and happy life because that's what you would have wanted for me. Hey, big sis, 
Can you tackle the issue of being unmarried with no kids at our age after 30 and annoying questions people ask about it? Again, I have a marriage video where I tackle all of that and I speak about it and I speak about the judgments that people make on a woman who is, because I am a woman, on a woman who is uh, above 30 who doesn't have kids and all of that. Please watch that video. It is on my channel. Just punch in Just Got Leo marriage video or whatever in the search box on YouTube and it'll come up and you can watch it. It's one of my most popular video uploads as well. So definitely check it out. I speak about it and I speak about how I deal with people who do that. But to give you something short and sweet, it is your life. It is 2022. You never have to be apologetic for whatever decision you decide to make with your life regarding children or marriage. Only you need to validate yourself. Children shouldn't validate you. They should fill your life. They should fill your life and make you happy and whatever. But you shouldn't lose the core of who you are because you have a child. A man, a partner, a lover, they, them, him, her should never validate who you are as a, as, 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 you know, they shouldn't, it, they shouldn't feel, they should bring your life, come to, into your life to fill your cup and not necessarily, you know, um, uh, um, uh, it seemed like a situation where the, you were nothing before they came out, uh, they came around. No. Remember always that your decision to be happy without children or without be having being married or whatever is your decision and it's the right one you choose the decision that's right for you if it hasn't come for you and you do want to be married and you do want to have kids just when somebody asks them asks you something like that if it's somebody older and they ask you something like that maybe sometimes they need to clap back themselves because you are grown you are above 30 no one should have the gall audacity gumption to still keep asking you questions like that at all Hey big sis, how did you find your niche on YouTube and what are your top three favorite books of all time? Any genre? Okay, my niche was really, really hard to find for me because when I started out, niche was really, really hard to find for me because when I started out, I started out with Beauty Corner, I did it with my sister and we were having a good time and all of that, but we were doing a little bit of everything. We were doing beauty, makeup, uh, this traveling, this, this, this until we both realized that we want different things from our channels. That's when I started my own. I continued with the makeup a little bit, but then I realized I'm not crazy about makeup. I enjoy applying makeup and I love how makeup makes me feel. I love how makeup, you know, just, 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 it makes me feel more confident and all of that. But I, I, I'm not crazy about producing makeup related content. I am crazy about, however, developing women, being better, being better versions of ourselves, talking about mental health. I am crazy about traveling. I am crazy about my home and home decor and all of that. And that's how I, I, I can't speak. I'm trying to talk really quickly. That's how I reduced my niche to just doing vlogs, which incorporate mental health, which incorporate home decor and home things that I love in one space. So it's in a vlog where I talk about mental health, current issues, women development, let's build each other up, that kind of thing in a vlog because I know that you guys love the vlogs. So I make sure that it's in a vlog, but I'm still pushing what I wanna push in that vlog, right? What is important to me and what makes sense to me. And then of course, there'll be the side pieces with the candid with cat and the motivating and inspiring sit down videos like something like this, which I do anyway. The views aren't that great on these kinds of videos, but I do them anyway because I love them. And I know that this is what I feel like I was put on earth for to even help just one person i've said this so many times to even help just one person change their life in any way look at their life differently in any way i feel like that that's my pay pose especially when it comes to women and that's why i do what i do that's how i found my niche it took a while it took a couple of years but i found it i found it uh what are your top three favorite books of all time first um 
First one is The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho, which got me into reading. Loved it so much. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. The second one is Return to Love by Marianne Williamson. Absolutely loved that book. Read it, highlighted, annotated, did everything. It was a beautiful book that touched me so much. The third one is a little bit of a contentious one because... Um, I don't know. I read a lot of fiction. There's so many books that I love. But one thing that comes to my mind right now as we speak is The Death of Vivek Oji. That book touched me so much because it's just self-love, identity, your journey, coming of age and all of that and finding who you truly are. And I feel like for me, many, 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 many years I have spent trying to find out who I truly am, what I like, what I'm about, um, what makes me me. And so that book for me stood out and has always stood out. I've always spoken about it on this channel more than two, three times. Hi, Kat. I want to know how you would tell your parents that you want to move out, even though you'll still be in the same city as them. By the way, I'm 27. This reminds me of when I wanted to move out and I had to have that conversation with my father. Now, here's the thing about that. 27, well within the age where you can move out. All I would ask is make sure you are working <laughs> if you're going to move out and you're going to have this conversation with your parents. Make sure you have looked into places where you can stay and if you can afford the rent and if you can bring what you can bring to the table. Do not sit your parents down and tell them that you want to move out. Meanwhile, you don't have a job. Meanwhile, you don't have a, a, a plan, a set plan in motion about how you are going to pay rent. Have you looked at certain places for this rent that you want to pay? They're going to ask you questions like that. So you need to start analyzing, assessing, writing down where you would want to move to, how much rent you'd be looking to paying. You are working, so it's not going to take too much of your uh, salary because you still need to be able to sustain yourself and sustain your life. But do not put the burden entirely. Parents are always going to help you, bro. Okay? Parents are always going to help you. But do not put the burden entirely on your parents to make sure that they fund this you wanting to move out. You have to have a plan in mind and you're going to have to suck it up and be strong about it and sit down with your folks and tell them that you would like to move out. You do plan on being responsible for your, um, you know, whatever responsibilities, responsible for your responsibilities, oh my God, responsible for whatever um, commitments that you would have to adhere to when you do. Then you have a plan in motion. Don't sit your parents down and say, Please, I want to move out, but please, can you uh, 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 supplement my moving out and supplement my life? Uh -uh. That one, she's not going to work. She's not. If you're not working, it's not the time for you to move out yet. Okay? Hi, Kat. I hope you're well. Do you have any avoidance tips on someone who constantly disturbs your peace in a way that once this person sets you back in life, your mind and heart sets these possibilities that things may work out, however all else fails? I'm struggling with this. Okay, I kind of get the question, but I'm not sure how it's phrased and all of that. So I'm just going to answer basically, do you have any avoidance tips on someone who's constantly disturbing your peace? Listen here, okay? It's 2022. People who are going to disturb your peace have no business being in your life, truly. Whether it is family members, whether it's its lovers, whether it's friends, whether it's whoever, they have no business being in your life if they are constantly going to be disturbing your peace, making you unhappy, making you, putting you in bad mental spaces or bad mental anything. They have no business being in your life. You need to choose yourself so much. Love and choose yourself so fiercely that you have no room to have people in your life that are going to be disturbing your peace. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So you have to make the cognizant choice that this is not for me. If somebody is disturbing your peace and you're already writing a statement like this and asking me something like this, that already means that it's a problem. That it's a problem. And I know it's hard to walk away, but you need to, this is the point where you need to choose yourself. You need to actively, fiercely, unequivocally choose yourself in such a way that the, the, 
even if they ever came and tried you, they will never win. They will never ever, oh, y'all, I, I broke a nail, chat. They will never, ever, ever, ever win. They'll never, ever win. You have to choose yourself. The moment you choose yourself actively, every day, you, you tap into another part of yourself. You tap into a, another part that's just like, me, I'm not going, <laughs> me, I'm not going to entertain you, shame you. Yo, I'm not going to do that, you know? And then you choose yourself and you walk away. It's easy to walk away when you choose yourself. Really easy to walk away. Uh, how do you cope with your mental health? Again, many videos that I have on this, on my channel. What I do on my bad mental health days, I have a vlog where I, where I really walk you through what I do on a bad mental health day. So please guys, just, I know I have a lot of videos. I know. All you need to do is go into the search bar on YouTube. Just say mental health, just got there. Watch what's going to come up and watch, subscribe, notify, bells, all of that. Because that content comes in through my vlogs and all of that. So I really implore you to watch my vlogs, even though I know that they're long. But I talk about these things in my vlogs. I really do. Okay. I think um, for this one, I'm going to stop it here. I might do a part two to this or a second installment to this a little bit later on this evening if I don't have any plans. So for this one, I'm going to stop it here. It's probably going to be around 30 minutes long. And, 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 and I know it's going to, you guys are going to be like, oh my God, this 30 minutes went by so fast. But I'm not trying to have these kind of videos 50 minutes long or 45 minutes long. That's reserved for my vlogs. <laughs> so I'm going to do another installment of this where I look at your Instagram questions and then we'll attack it that way. I still have more videos to film today, so I'm going to leave this one here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this content, please repost, retweet, tag me. Put in the hashtag of advice with cat. Show me when you are watching the videos at home, in your private spaces, on your TVs. Show me that kind of stuff. I really love seeing that. And also add hashtag advice with cat so that we can start a movement here. So that we can help each other, so that we can learn, grow from each other. If you have answers to some of the questions that I mentioned in this, write them down below. If you've got your own scenario, questions, something you'd like my advice on, write it down below. We are going to start a movement where we are going to be better versions of ourselves, for ourselves, before anybody else. Okay? Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate all of you so, so much. We are on the road to 30k. We're going to get to 50k by June. Let's make it happen. Please, I need your help on this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next Advice with Cat. I'll see you soon.